So the promise of spending and getting free agents, uh, multiple free agents, sounds great. But did anybody run this new big spending idea by Bill DeWitt oh. Jr.? He says, uh, if they can buck the trend and sign two big names, then I'm Miles Davis. The um, um, Well, what about if they sign one and trade for one? See, I think. Again, category A, A, B, it's not going to be all in one category. I think, if you ask me, they'll try and get one from an A, but it'll be on the bottom end of whatever A is. We'll we'll figure that out. I don't know that there's much of a bottom of A. Well, that's probably part of that, too. It might even be a B rather than an A. But I also think they will try and find a way to trade for a younger arm that could be a potential A. And I don't know. I'm not going to tell people that's going to be the – the kid Gilbert um, a guy. I don't even know if he's available, but I would go knock on Detroit's door and say, what's, what's it going to take to get Tariq Skubal out of your backyard? Yeah. I heard that they're, they need a second baseman and I'll feel like, well, we, we got a couple of those that we could trade you. And I'm not talking about Nolan Gorman, but it, that's just a, just some thoughts. Um, and then they are going to find that project and what, that you spoke of, They're, that's going to be one of these these arms. Yeah, it's just get used to it. They're not going to be three A's or, or two. Or yeah, an A I, and two right, B's. Right, that's all I'm trying to say. So, and yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I I got no problem if they have a solid basis for making the decision, because again, they need numbers. They need numbers of pitchers. Yes. One, what the hell good would it be to get two? starting pitchers that w- w- are the most expensive, let's say, right? Other than the fact that, you know, you love the fact that DeWitt spent money. But, okay, but then you, you know, you make those major investments, and good for you that you did. But you don't have, you don't have depth behind it. So then what yep. you're going to wind up in a way kind of where you were because if somebody goes down – you suffer some injuries, then you're like, gosh, we we don't we don't have, we really don't have enough we don't have we don't have enough guys. They, they got to load up. They need a volume of pitchers. So anyway, but as far as Bill DeWitt, real, real quick, and this is something that I um, that always confuses me because, and I've talked about it, gosh, so many times, written about it so many times. Bill DeWitt is on he he is in on every decision. He's not a bystander. He's not a guy that in his home uh, here or Jupiter, Florida, or whatever. He's not, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, whatever you, whatever you think's best. Like, you know, call me up. Let me know what you did. He, <laughs> you know, so the people have always been so off base when they, they just isolate specifically on Mo. Moe's got Mo has screwed a lot of things up, but he, Mo also has guardrails. You know, he yeah. know, he knows what Bill DeWitt likes to do, doesn't want to do. He's got a budget that he does not set the owner sets, and the owner, the chairman, is in on every single thing, even minor things. But no people that I don't know why that, that that's it seems to be difficult to comprehend for some folks. I don't know why. More from the text line. Bernie, how do they acquire an in- impact arm by a trade without moving Gorman, Wynn, Walker, or Tinkens? Oh, they can. They can. Um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you one way they can. is, in P- Again, people will sneer. I, I don't really care, frankly. Um, if they... Make it known for sure that Tommy Edmond is available, and I'm not saying he's the centerpiece. Right. He's an he's an appealing player to a lot of teams for a lot of reasons, and um, you know he's got two more years left after you know starting next year before he becomes a free agent. Um, since he came to the major leagues, uh, he is the third best base runner in baseball according to fan graphs and baseball reference um he is a top in the top nine defensively in runs saved um 
His career stolen base rate is 90.5%. Um, you can pl- he he I checked this today because yep. I want to be sure. Defensive run save. He he's he's a plus defender at shortstop, at second base, at center field, at third base, right field. He's barely played left field. He is a plus glove at every one of those spots, and he's a switch hitter. And yes, he's better against left-handed pitchers and right, but it's not like he's horrendous against right-handed pitchers. He's below average, six percent exactly below average for his career. I mean, that's a guy that can fill a lot of roles for you. And the other thing, too, uh, since he came to the major leagues in terms of qualifying position players, and not meaning that they, they played enough to qualify for right. like a bet. Since he came to the majors, like there's like 307, I think, 307 qualifying position players. He ranks because of his base running defense, his offense, he ranks 37th on that list of like 305 players. You say, well, 37, 37th is pretty good. Damn good. Yep. He's got a lot of value, and I think we've seen him so much that maybe we take that for granted. He would absolutely draw interest if you're looking for um, just, a, just a good starting pitcher. You know? I think so, too. You know, managers now, general managers now, the, the, guy, the fact you get a guy who's cost-controlled for two years, who can do all these things, he makes you better base running, he makes you better defensively at five different spots. Thanks. And, you know, it, at worst, he's going to be a little below average against righty. He's going to pummel lefty pitchers. Uh, I mean... Plays his tail off every time he's on out there, you know, and he's inexpensive. There's a market for that. But, like, uh, what we got to get away from, and here I go again, is this, like, oh, 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 you can't trade little Tommy. <laughs> he's your best defensive center fielder. Oh, oh. It, it, if you trade him, you – you, you you don't have a good defensive center fielder. Go to scoops with DannyMac.com and read a little something, 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 something about Victor Scott the second. There's a text about him here, question for you. He's going to be their center fielder. He's lined up to be their center fielder. It's a question of whether it'll be early next season or later in the season. If you can get a pitcher that's going to help your team for Tommy Edmond, you do it, and the dumbest thing you can say is, oh, we got to keep him. He's got to play center field. What, play center field for what, three or four months until Victor Scott takes over? Really? Is that the best use of an asset? Well, you know, Bernie, they can get him through 2024, and then when Scott's ready, then blah, blah. Tommy Edmond will have less value next winter. Why? Because at that point, he'll have one year left before he can become a free agent. Now he's got two left. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. That was one of the questions on the text line. With all the noise of uh, Scott, do you think he's the Cardinals are overrating their prospects again? And that that, that was one of the questions uh, also on our text line. There's a uh, former Major League scout. He was a scout for the Astros, scout for um, the Mariners. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're gonna have to you're gonna have to listen to me read some things, but they're quotes. Um, Bernie Pleskov, and he does some freelance writing. And there was a piece at Forbes online because he went to the Arizona Fall League and he scouted Victor Scott. This doesn't have a damn thing to do with the Cardinals, other than the fact that Victor Scott works for the Cardinals. Right. Um, let me read. Can I read you a few things? Sure. Sure. He, fi- he, fi- he filed a scouting report. Again, this man does not work for the Cardinals. He's got nothing to do with the Cardinals. He's an independent talent evaluator who's worked for two other teams. Quote, Scott has opened his eyes in the fall league with his blazing speed. Putting it mildly, Cardinals fans will love watching him play baseball. He, his incredible game-changing speed may be why MLB.com ranks him as the number four card, uh, player among Cardinals' top 30 prospects. Quote, 
His speed is among the best this observer has seen in quite a while. On a 20 to 80 scouting grade scale, Scott's speed registers a grade 80, which is extremely rare. Uh, quote, speed kills, and speed kills in professional baseball. Given the new rules, far more runs are being scored. Thanks to bigger bases, a limit on pitcher disengagements from the pitching rubber and the pitch clock, far more bases are being stolen. Scott profiles as the type of player that will capitalize in a big way on the new rules, exploit uh, any weaknesses regarding base stealing he senses from the opposition. Quote, it isn't only about speed. Scott shows some true pop in his bat. He can be a home run threat as he physically continues to mature and gains more depth to his frame. Scott may also gain home run power when he learns, like young hitters have to learn, figures out how pitchers are trying to get him out. Quote, this scout has seen Scott make a consistent contact in the Arizona Fall League while scouts have expressed concerns about a potential strikeout problem. The issue has not surfaced in the games this scout has observed. He's only struck out eight times in 99 plate appearances, and I, I can throw this in. This year in the minor leagues, his strikeout rate was around 10%. That's outstanding. Quote, with his speed, one might want to see Scott walk a bit more. It would help him get on base, allowing him to use his world-class speed. But Scott goes to the plate to hit the ball. He should be able to hit for a solid big league average. He won't win a batting title, but if he can get on base, he's a guy who can steal second and then possibly third, and he's going to put himself in position to score plenty of runs. Um, quote, former Major League Scout. Filed a, filed a scouting report. Has nothing to do with the Cardinals as far as his affiliation. Independent. Quote, using excellent speed and good route running. Scott's a solid outfielder. He pros, profiles as a take charge center fielder with great ability to track balls off the bat and chase down drives to both gaps. Because his arm strength is average, he isn't a candidate to play right field. That's all right. They don't need a right fielder. Uh, quote, with potential for power to emerge in the future and good defensive play to this scout, Scott projects as a grade 55 player. That means an above average major league talent. A grade 55 player is in the lineup daily, and he's not a platoon guy. Keith Law, the athletic, talking about, and he was a guy that wasn't all that high on Law before the Arizona oh, uh, Fall yep, League. Yep, yep. He, like, 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 Earlier last season, he was like, okay, you know, he's got speed, but I don't know about the other stuff. Uh, let me just read this uh, really quick because, about his defense for all these people that are like, oh, you can't. Uh, uh, we, need, we, we need little Tommy out there. <laughs> we we, we got to have little Tommy out in center field. <laughs> Keith Law. He looked very good in Arizona, not just on the bases. Here's the key quote. He can play the heck out of center field. He's got great reads that give him unbelievable range coupled with his speed. That's Keith Law, who's a cynic if there ever was one. Yep. He doesn't, he doesn't get a paycheck from the card. So I, I just gave you two things right there. So when you ask... If the Cardinals are overrating Victor Scott because they always overrate their own prospects, they have a bad habit of doing that. Mm -hmm. Your question's wrong based on what I just gave you. The question should be, well, is this former Major League scout, Bernie Plutzkoff and Keith Law, or do they always overrate prospects? No. They have a critical eye because I've read them both for years. Keith Law throw it all out there. Like this kind of herpy, the, uh, the first the round? Yeah. Jerpy? Yeah. Sorry, I yep. was saying. No, that's right. Um, he just said in Arizona Fall League, you know, Keith Law said, I'm not impressed. His, his, his pitching motion's messed up and this and that and this and that. He, he, he doesn't just give you a stock rote answer. Oh, I like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a friend with one of the Cardinals analysts, so I'm going to praise all their prospects. No. That's, that's the wrong guy. He doesn't do that way. He'll, he'll rip them if he thinks they're, he doesn't understand the fuss. See, you got, you, got, you, you got another asset you can move this winter because you have Victor Scott who's going to be knocking on the door uh, real soon. He may even have a chance uh, to make the big club out of spring training. I, I would think they'd want to give him some triple A, a time. Yeah. 
But when he got to double A for the first time ever in his life, um, he hit 323. His own base percentage was like 380, and he slugged 450. Plus, he stole every base in sight. I'm surprised he didn't run off the field with the base. <laughs> That's first time. Never played in double A's a big level as far as like making a transition. Mm -hmm. He was an excellent hitter at double A, and that was his first exposure to double A. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, again, here we go. It's like that's a guy. If the Cardinals can break of their addiction to certain players, I don't care that Ali Marmol, like Tommy Edmond, is one of Ali's favorites. Right. I don't care about that because Ali is a young, insecure manager, and it's like so if he's got a guy like Edmond, or yeah, yeah, what do you? I'll, I'll play anywhere. I'll run through the wall. I'll dig it. I'll, I'll cover so much grass. I'll be digging up the outfield, chasing balls. I got you, Skipper. <laughs> it, I, you know, because I've had people say that. Well, you know, that is one of Marmol's favorites. Who cares? I mean, that's one of the problems around this place. That's why, you know, it's like, you know, certain players, all the managers, like, oh, you know, this guy really likes me. He really respects me. So, oh, yeah, I got to take care of him. That's no way to run a ball club. No. It, Tommy's a great dude. I'm being a little. Well, I, yeah, it's not. I, like I, I'm, I'm make not fun. I'm not making fun of him. I'm making fun of the way he's perceived, and also in a way, the way the Cardinals are, as like as if he's absolutely indispensable. I don't think he is. That's all I'm trying to say. And if you're going to make a move, you would make a move now when you've got a fast rising and just fast running prospect who's knocking on the door and there is value on the trade block for Tommy Edmond but you got to be men about this you got to be adults about it you can't do that oh, little Tommy's our guy he's one of my favorites how many games did you lose last year well because you didn't have pitching if you got to trade something man you got to move something in that's why, you know, I mentioned Scooball or somebody like that on some team. They're looking for a second baseman, and you get one of your outfielders. You want to give him Carlson, who's got years of uh, control on there, and somebody thinks he can still be what they thought he was going to be. It's just – I'm just throwing out names. But those are all guys that got to be considered as possible pieces to move here. Yeah, no. I, because – I, you know, I, I agree, man. If they came to me and said, okay, we've made some moves, we got some pitching, and we had to trade some guys to get pitching, if they said, Newt Bar's in center, I'm going to have Donovan in left and Walker in right to start the year, and we'll move on, and I got Gorman at second, I go, okay, we, as long as we've acquired some pitching. See, now, that's the appeal of, uh, of Edmund, too, because I really mean it. So a team will say, you know, I really need a second baseman, just to follow your yep. point. I really need a second baseman. Cardinals are like, well, oh, we got a second baseman for you. Want a gold glove? Yeah. And he's a plus defender there in his career every by every metric. Yep. And, oh, by the way, you know, you can put him in center field. Uh -huh. Plus defense. You can put him at shortstop, plus defense. You put him at third, plus defense. You put him right field, plus defense. So, like, we got your second baseman. But – we also got he's, – he's also a center fielder, shortstop, <laughs> right fielder, too. What do you need? He can do it. Yeah. That's, that's so key to what's, what the possibilities are with the trade. I actually think uh, Tommy Edmond, if he ended up being dealt to a smarter organization, they, they would be able to find a way to get him to be a more consistent hitter from the left side. Or – they would actually convince him that he just needs to bat right-handed from now on. That could be it, too, yeah. You know? Very good point. So, anyway. Maybe a team like Tampa is interested in him. They could fix him. Oh. And use him in many, many roles. That, see, that, He'd be their dream guy to acquire. See, that's something that um, teams really want. That's why Donovan is so uh, appealing. But he says his plate discipline and contact skills and his power starting to – Bubble. Up. Yep. His on base percentage for a left handed hitter, he hits uh, lefties okay, better than okay. Mm -hmm. But Donovan's another guy that can you can use all over the chessboard, you yep. know? And teams want that now because you know why? Uh, 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 every one of these teams are 
carrying too many pitchers because they have to. Yeah. And the ma- if the managers could carry 20 pitchers, they would. Well, I, I, that's all right. I only need four position players, you know. So, therefore, when you have a shorter or smaller bench than you used to, guys who can play multiple positions, that is a huge deal. Because if you pinch hit for someone or whatever and you bring somebody in the game, you can move them around for nine innings if you have to, right? Absolutely true. You don't need a specific bench guy at those positions. You know, you can, you can deploy him all over the place. They got a lot of moving parts that they can, again, they can adjust on the fly if they have to. They just got to figure out which ones they want to keep and which ones they're going to move. Yeah. And – They'll figure it out, I hope. I mean, they've got enough opportunity there to make that happen. So, um. I'm uh, the, the only one that uh, – well, I shouldn't say the only one. Um, I'm, I get the heebie-jeebies when, you know, I see people online and say, well, you know, Gorman's decent, but he's overrated. That's the one guy I don't want to move this offseason if they I'm, don't have to. 23 years old, the Cardinals have never had, never had in the history of their franchise a 20, 23 year old, 22, 23 year old hitter, left handed hitter, hit 27 home runs in a season. Everybody's looking for left handed power. Uh, you got it. The Cardinals have not had a lot of left handed power. They developed him. The kid works his tail off. He he got better last year. A lot of it was because of commitment to hard work. And you got Morons who are just uh, because he's not Mel Ott <laughs> already. Well, you know he's been up for a couple of years. He's 23. And when they drafted him, everybody knew it was going to take him time to develop some hitting skills. And it close up the holes in his swing, and he's working like a dog to get it done. And he made progress last year. Um, he went in through one funk, and again, he's got to make them shorter. Yeah, it just amazes me how many people just like view him as like he's just a guy. Ah, uh, he's all right. He's just kind of overrated. All right, go go to Baseball Reference. I'll wait, <laughs> and you show me a twenty. 20- 20, a guy that's 23 or younger bats on the left side who is hit for this much power. I'll, I'll wait. Go ahead. We're going to be here a while. Yeah. <laughs> you don't give up on that, man. No. You don't give up on that. And, you know, you know, and he's the guy that represents the biggest threat. Another Arozarena, another Garcia. Absolutely true. Why did they give up on uh, Garcia? And I don't blame him in a way with their thinking. Why did they give up? On, well, man, he just strikes out so much. We don't know if he'll ever go to, you know, make good con. He strikes out too much. And he, yeah, he strikes out too much. Strikes out. So it's like they, they ignored that, he, that the dude is launching missiles. And it's just like, you know, God forbid they should work with a guy and give him time to kind of just develop more uh, plate discipline. You know, after coming to the U.S., after playing, you know, Cuban baseball and everything. Yep. No, no, no. We, we got we got better guys. No, you didn't. Well, you, know, you had no one who could hit the ball like that. So, Gorman could be the next Adolis Garcia. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm with you. Hit, hit it, power hitting. Yep, ones. absolutely true. You know? It, Gorman didn't take – I'm sorry, not Gorman. Uh, Garcia didn't take off till like, what, 27 it, – 20, yeah, it took him a while. So, and Gorman will be there long before that. Right, and he's 23. I'd be more than happy to be a little patient if he continues to develop. Right. Let it, just let him do his thing. I'd hate to give up Donovan, too, because this guy, man, he is so valuable to that offense in so many different ways. And, you know, people love, quote, you know, clutch hitting. Yep. I, I've read those numbers on the air. Um his numbers with runners and scoring, his numbers in high leverage situations, unbelievably good. And he's um, he's a really important part of their offense. And um, they were desperately trying to keep him in the lineup. Yeah. Before they finally said, we just got to put you down and get you fixed for next Newt year. Newt Bar, I wonder if they can be talked into it, to that. They probably can't, but I, again, I wonder. Depends on what you're getting in return, right? I yeah. guess. 